Anybody flowing? Anybody flowing? <laughs> oh yeah, that 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 right there, brother Malcolm. I got a little serious spark to it. Amen. It was grace. This is the day that the Lord has made. Now, how many of you glad to be alive? You, you, you know, you know, you do realize that you, God didn't have to pick you up this morning. That's why we make that statement. Because we want to make sure that we give God all the honor and God all the praise in the name of Jesus for the things, watch this, for the things he has done and the things that he is doing. And I am of the belief, and I'm a firm believer, that those that, in the midst of their struggle, in the midst of their going through, that are able and still recognize the greatness of God and give God praise, those folk God will bless thoroughly and mightily. Amen. Y'all believe that? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God in this place. We're going to get right to this real quick. This is what I need y'all to do is open your Bibles to Daniel. Open your Bibles to Daniel. Open your Bibles to Daniel. As they set up the stage, normally we'll go through a video. But because of the sake of, for, uh, for the sake of time, we're going to get right into the word. Amen? Amen, amen. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand at this time, and then we're going to recognize all of our visitors toward the back end of this. We praise God for this opportunity. Amen, amen. Y'all just put it up and I'll situate it as we go, okay? Y'all good? Amen, amen. All right, Daniel 6. Y'all got it? You got Daniel 6? So we want to give a shout out to all of those that are uh, uh, online with us this morning, all of you that are in person right now. We praise God for you. Thank you so much uh, for being here and worshiping with us. We praise God uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. For all of our visitors. Bring that over here, right here. We praise God for all of our visitors in the name of Jesus that have come and we're going to recognize you. You make our worship experience even the better, even the better. So we want to love on you today and we want to let you know how special you are to us and how much we appreciate you worshiping with us in the name of Jesus. Give it up for him, fellowship. Give it up for him. Give it up for him. Oh, y'all can do better than that, fellowship. Give it up. Give it up. Amen, amen, amen. So this month, this month, this this month, it, which is February, and normally in the month of February, I start a series on relationships. So I have a three-part series. It was uh, started out as a four-part series, and I'll tell you why it's a three-part as we dive into this. But we have a series entitled The Power of Relationships, The Power of Relationships. So I want to encourage you to make sure you pay close attention because there's power in relationships. So we're talking about relationships. And you see up here, uh, uh, when, when we're bringing the banner down, you will see, do you have that banner that says power of relationship? Because I want everyone to see that. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about God. We're going to talk about relationship with family. You don't want to miss that. And then we're going to talk about relationships with friends, with friends, with friends. And then you may see self up there. But self is a, uh, as, is a part of each one of these relationships. Amen? Y'all got it? So we're going to dive into this. So turn your Bibles to Daniel, the sixth chapter. Daniel, sixth chapter. If you have it, say amen. All right, all right, all right. Let's look at verses 1 through 5. 1 through 5. 1 through 5. And let's read together. Let's read together. And we read from the English Standard Version. Y'all ready? Here we go. It says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps. Keep going. Then this Daniel, everyone. Excellent spirit. So you're going to hear me talk about this excellent spirit. Some of the different, some of the other versions will say extraordinary spirit. Uh, uh, excellent spirit. 
So we're going to discuss that piece. That's, that's a major pivotal piece in the text. All right, next, next, next uh, set of scriptures. All right, then it says, then everyone, the high officials... Amen, amen. Lift up your Bibles, repeat after me, or your iPhones, your iPad, whatever you have your Bibles on. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. I am what it says. I can do what it says. I confess power, prosperity, position, favor, fruitfulness, overflow. Will follow me all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, be it done. It is done unto me. Amen, amen. I'm going to ask the sound to take just a little bit off of these monitors up here. Please take just a little bit off the monitors. Amen, amen. So check this out. Remain standing, remain. I'm going to let you sit down. I know I'm out of order a little bit with the flow. The flow. Amen. So y'all just... Stick with me on this one. Y'all know what we do here because we believe that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. So from this passage of scripture, the first, the first sermon in this series, The Power of Relationship, is entitled, God Relationship, My BFF. God Relationship, My BFF. Turn to someone real quick and ask them the question. Is God your BFF? Uh huh. Some of y'all don't know what BFFs are. I thought I heard somebody say BFF. What is BFF? Best friend for life. Y'all, y'all know we have a lot of best friends, but the real best friend should be God. You, you know, your grandmother told you. I'm gonna let you sit down. God would never forsake you nor leave you. Amen. So why wouldn't God be your best friend? But that's a guarantee. God will never forsake you, nor God will ever leave you. He's going to be with you through thick and thin. He's going to love you regardless. Amen? God relationship. God relationship. Turn to someone else that you didn't turn to and ask them the question, is God your BFF? Amen, amen, amen. Don't answer the question until we finish this sermon. Don't answer the question until we finish this sermon. Go ahead and take your seat. Human beings are defined by their relationship more than anything else. We are defined by our relationship more than anything else. Relationship tells us who who we are, who we are, and what is expected of us. Our relationship defines where we've been, where we are going relationships. Throughout the Bible, it's easy to see a few select people who are so clearly defined by their relationships. Mr. Wilson, in Genesis 6, Noah was defined by who he wasn't. In 1 Samuel 15, David was defined by who he replaced. And in John 18, Peter was defined by who he followed. All of which were designed and orchestrated by God for God. Therefore, Sister Lakeisha, for that reason, Your relationship with God is the most important. It will dictate the flow, the smoothness of all other relationships. Somebody say God relationship. 
catch this. Because of God in your life, your relationship worth is valuable. Because God in your life, let me say that again because somebody needs to say amen. Because of God in your life, your relationship worth is valuable. Mm. God specially made you. That's why you don't need to look to anyone else or, or desire what other folk have. God has blessed you with some stuff that you don't even know you have. He specially made you. Genesis 1 tells us we are the only creature made in God's image. You are God's masterpiece. Hear me good. I, I, I don't care what hopeless feeling you may be having about your life in this season. Just know you are the only creation in this world that God created with inherent value. Catch this. You're the only creation in this world that Jesus was willing to lay down his life for. Oh no, I, I, that boy, boy, I wish I had some, I wish I had some real believers in this place right now. I promise you. Let me say that again. You were the only creation that Jesus was willing to lay his life down for. Watch this, and I'm setting this up about God's relationship. You are worth all the detail, intentionality. You are worth all the time, all the follow-up, all the correction and the effort it took to make this world. You are worth it. I don't care how you feel. You are worth the diligence it took to create the Bible, God's creation. You are the only creation in this world that can break God's heart. A cow can't break God's heart. A dog can't break God's heart. A fish can't break God's heart. You are the only creation that can break God's heart. Why? Because you are special. Tell somebody you are super special to God. Tell them, tell them, tell them. So catch this. This text, and someone may, may be asking, well, 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 Dr. Stafford, why are we dealing with Daniel in this God relationship? Daniel, relationship with God, epitomizes what our relationship should be. I mean, I mean if you just look at Daniel's life, look at his life. Daniel was, D Daniel was part, watch this, of this society in which he was dwelling because he was in captivity. Relationship with God. Watch this. Because Daniel refuses, refuses to eat from the king's table. Watch this. That's how his relationship is defined. Daniel refuses to eat from the king's table because his understanding of God. God takes Daniel to a whole different level. Daniel and his friends under captivity, based on his relationship with God, were appointed as leaders over the nation. Daniel, same Daniel, was condemned with his same friends. Sister Belinda, and thrown into the fiery furnace, but because of his relationship with God, the king was able to come see Mother Williams and notice that Daniel and his friends are not the only one in there, but there's somebody else in there. Because of his relationship with God, God allows him to use his gifts that God has blessed him with, to interpret dreams, and to be put in a position of leadership and influence because of his relationship with God. So check this out. Throw the slide up that says our sermon observation. This is for the next three Sundays. These are the three observations that I really want you to pay attention to and understand. And if you get your 
cameras out, your phones out, take a picture. I want you to meditate on this this week. This will bless your soul. And it's very simplistic, but theologically strong here. If you look here, it says God created us to be in relationship with him. God created us to be in relationship with him. Our priority in relationship should be God through Jesus Christ and not that person that you're looking, that companion you're looking for, because if you got a solid relationship, and I don't want to get ahead of myself with God through Jesus Christ, you won't make a mistake when you pick that companion that God has directed you to. Oh, yeah. Simple. Check out the second observation. And all three of these observations connect with every sermon, so you'll hear this over the next few Sundays. Jesus is our relationship bridge to God. You cannot forget that. Jesus is our relationship bridge to God. That is important. Then the last thing, our God relationship would dictate and define our relationships with others. Our God relationship would dictate and define our relationship with others. So check this out. I got a couple of things I want to give you real quick because I want to, to show you how to build this relationship. And I'm going to utilize Daniel in this text, Daniel in his life. And I'm also going to go all the way back to Genesis to show you that we were created for relationship. Everything about the creation has to do with a relationship with God being the priority in our relationship bundle. Watch this. So notice the text. The first thing I want to show you is really how, how do we get to this point? How do we get to a strong relationship with God? Why, why, watch this. Watch this. Notice what the text says. The text says, uh, and I emphasize the pivotal point in this text, in verse number 3, it says, Then this Daniel became distinguished above all others high officials and satraps. So, so here we have Daniel that was selected as, as one of the three that would govern this nation. Watch this. But then Daniel stands out above the other two because, it says this, of an excellent spirit. This is, this is extremely important. Remember the other versions I said, excellent spirit, extraordinary spirit, exceptional spirit. Watch this. How, how does Daniel get this? And why is this exceptional, extraordinary, and excellent spirit important? Now, all of you should have gotten a handout. Did you get your handout? I need you to do some homework this morning because I want you to get this, and I don't want you to leave out of here not understanding the magnitude of this because like I said before, like I said before, Brother Brian, like I said before, that your relationship with God is the most important relationship. I tell people this all the time. If you really, what God has placed in your heart as a purpose, as a talent, and as a gift, if you really want that to manifest, you better make sure that your relationship with God and Jesus Christ is your priority. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. Because if you don't, you, your life will be like a little hamster on the hamster wheel. And you'll just keep turning and turning. And then when you get old and crusty, when you get old and crusty, you'll realize that I, I never accomplished what I set out to accomplish. And Satan will set you up for the okie doke, throwing you a few nuggets as you turn on the hamster wheel in life to make you think you're making some progress because he wants you to be stationary because God has impregnated you with some great stuff. God has blessed you with some great faith. God has blessed you with some great things. And he does not, the enemy does not want that to manifest in your life. So don't get it twisted. So that's why God says, look, let me, let me, let me show you, let me, let me show you, let me, let me show you. Young people, catch this. The, the quicker you catch it, man, I promise you, watch this. Exceptional spirit. Hear this, an intentional and solid God relationship cultivates, watch this, cultivates and is also developed through exceptional, extraordinary, and excellent spirit. Now watch this, point number one, an intentional and solid God relationship cultivates an exceptional, extraordinary, excellent spirit. This is major for you to get. I know it sounds real simple, but this is major for you to get. The definition, watch, watch this, of cultivate. To prepare and use 
for the raising of crops, to loosen or break up the soil about. So, so cultivate says this. It says it's going to raise you up. And also, in order to raise you up, it has to break some stuff around you. So what are you saying, Dr. Seven? Watch this. Your God relationship is developed, is cultivated. How you get an excellent spirit, how you get an exceptional spirit, how you get an extraordinary spirit is through the cultivation efforts of God as you follow God through Jesus Christ. Now watch this. And that's where Daniel is in his position. That's why if you look at the, if you look at chapters 1 through 7, you can see how God is cultivating Daniel because Daniel has positioned himself in a relationship with God. Once you position yourself in a relationship with God, these things will happen. Watch this. Check this out. Watch this. Keep that there. Keep that there. So let's look at, real quick, let's look at God's relationship cultivating process. Let's check this out. Let's, let's, let's watch this. Let's, let's look at this. That's what your sheet should look like. I need you to fill this out. You don't, you don't have to. I promise you. If you, get, if you get this and you meditate on this, I promise you, it will change your life. I guarantee you. Watch, watch this. It gives you a deeper perspective. God's relationship cultivating process. Huh. Cultivating tools. Are, see those, see those circles right there? Cultivating tools. I want you to fill this in. Word at the top in white. I want you to go right. Worship. Warfare. And work. And I'm not talking on your nine to five. I'm talking about work ministry. Let me say it again. Word. Top white. To the right, yellow, worship, notice, 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 warfare, and work ministry. And that cycle just continues. Those are the four tools that God uses <laughs> to cultivate you. That's why you have to be in position in God through Jesus Christ in order. But a lot of times we work backwards because, watch this, we think that all the other stuff outside of this is the things that get us to where God wants us, and it does not. These are the four cultivating tools that God uses. If you notice here, you see all of this right here? This is like what I use for, 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 for uh uh, uh, working in the yard and doing all that good stuff. Got a little fertilizer here. Because when God uh, cultivates you, watch this, you stand, you stand out. You, you stand out. If you look at what it says, word, worship, warfare, and work ministry, you will stand at the top of the bunch. Because what is happening is now these tools will give cultivating results. Now, understand this. Everything that we do, everything that God does in us is for God's glory and edification. So, so you got to understand this. Your life has to be situated where God gets more glory than you, where God gets more glory than your situation, where God gets more glory than your business, where God gets more glory than your job, where God gets more glory than your family than you. And watch, watch, watch this. Catch this, and we must get this. All of this is to benefit us for God's glory. We are not doing God a favor by having an intentional and solid relationship with him. This relationship cultivates an exceptional, again, extraordinary, excellent spirit in you. God is already these things. So God doesn't need us to be exceptional. God doesn't need us to be excellent. God doesn't need us to be extraordinary. We need God. So catch this. Here we go. Let's prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Let me show you how this all goes back to when we were created. So there are four things, if you look up here, cultivating results, discipleship, companionship, stewardship. I'm going to show you how important these four things are. I'm going to run through them. I want you to write down the definition, just pin them in. You can come back and check it out again. 
uh, but I need you to pin these in. These are, the four, these are your four cultivating results. These are the things that you should be, your life should be surrounded around. These are the things that should be happening in your life. Everything else will fall in place, I promise you. If these four things uh, uh, are noticeable in your life and in your spirit, everything else will fall in place. Discipleship, discipleship. Discipleship means this. This is what discipleship means. The process of making someone become more like Christ. Remember what I said. Okay, here we go. Here go the tools, and it's going to make a lot of sense. Uh, 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 word, worship, warfare, and work. Word, worship, warfare, and work. The tools will create the results. Again, word, worship, warfare, and work in ministry will create discipleship. Discipleship means this, the process of making someone become like Christ. Daniel's spirit was a direct reflection of God. Y'all catch that? In Genesis, the Bible says we were created, what? In the image of God. Our relationship is about that. We are to become more like God through Jesus Christ. Discipleship, discipleship, a process. So the result says that, watch this, in my relationship, I should see year after, month after month, year after year, a, a, a progress being made that I'm becoming more like Christ. Discipleship. The next is companionship, a feeling or fellowship or friendship, spending time with God. Synonyms in this, watch this, closeness, solidar solidarity, togetherness, intimacy, meaning a deep affection. Check out Daniel. Check out what happens to Daniel. This is a perfect example. Check out what happens to Daniel. Once, watch this, once the other sad traps, if you continue to read, once the other sad traps figured out that he was getting more favor, they became jealous. They became jealous, and, and, and they made the king sign a decree that would go against Daniel and his worship, Daniel and his word, Daniel and his warfare, Daniel and his work for ministry. But that did not stop Daniel because Daniel, watch this, was being cultivated by God. Daniel realized that the only way that I will get over this is through God's relationship. So what I'm going to do, the biggest companion and my biggest friend is God. So instead of balling up in a corner and hiding myself, Instead of quitting on God, instead of asking God, why is this happening to me? What Daniel does, he goes to the window, opens up the window, faces the east like he normally does, and begins to pray to God knowing that his life was in jeopardy. Why? Because of his companionship, your cultivation, your word, your worship, your warfare, your work in ministry creates a deeper companionship. And watch this, third thing. Check this out. In this companionship, let me, let me stay right here. In this companionship, watch this. Let me, let me show you the mechanism and, and the measurements. In this companionship, you should be talking to God everywhere. Some folk, some folk, some folk, online folk, some folk, if you watch this and record, some folk are, are, are on Facebook more than they talk to God. Y'all go ahead and say amen. Some folk, and I'm not saying anything's wrong with Facebook. Some folk on TikTok, young people catch me more than we talk to God. Everywhere, everywhere, every day, every hour, every situation. You should have a conversation if you're really building this companionship with God every hour. It doesn't have to be intentional that you go into your closet and you pray, but every hour there should be some type of conversation going on with God. If it's not just thanking God for his day, thanking God for what he's done, or oh, bless your name, God, or passing somebody that, that, that you're driving and you're passing somebody that looks like they're least lost, left out, you can't stop, but you send up a prayer for them in the name of Jesus. There should be a conversation that you're having with God through Jesus Christ every hour on the hour. We were created to have relationship with God, companionship. Notice in Adam and Eve, I told you we're going back to the beginning in Genesis. Watch this. We were created. Companionship 3, 6, 13. The woman was convinced how lovely and fresh looking it was, that apple and it would, or, or that fruit, whatever it was. And it would make her so wise. She, so she ate some of the fruit and gave some to her husband. And he ate it too. And as they ate it, suddenly they became aware of their uh, nakedness and were embarrassed. So they uh, strung fig leaves together to cover themselves around the hips. That evening they heard the sound of the Lord, of God, Lord God walking in the garden. And they hid themselves among the trees. And the Lord called to Adam, 
Why are you hiding? Hmm. And Adam replied, I heard you coming and didn't want to see, see I didn't want you to see me naked, so I hid. Hmm. Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the fruit from the tree I warned you about? Yes, Adam admitted. I ate it. Hmm. The woman gave it to me. That woman that, watch this, notice what Adam said. That woman that you gave me. How could you do such a thing, God said, to the woman? And she said, the serpent tricked me and made me do it. Mm. Check this out. The whole creation aspect was, watch this. The reason why God tells them don't eat from this tree of knowledge because of the relationship, the companionship. God says, you don't need anything. All you need is me. Stop feeling alone. All you need is God. So, so, so what they left you? So what he left you? You tell the devil he is a lie. This is an opportunity because God is cultivating me. I'm going to tell you something here in a second. I'm getting ready to close. God is cultivating me. This is an opportunity for me to draw closer to God in relationship. Y'all catch that? Check this out. The next thing, the next thing under here is stewardship. Stewardship means this. Oh, this is so important. The careful and responsible management. Only got one point left. This careful and responsible uh, management is something entrusted to one's care. Stewardship. Stewardship. Entrusting. Entrusted to one's care. Entrusted to one's care. Remember, I said the cultivating tools, word, worship, warfare, and work creates these results. Stewardship. The careful and responsible management of something entrusted to someone's care. This is good stuff. Watch this. Watch this. Check out my boy Adam and my girl Eve again. We have, we have, God has given us stewardship, stewardship, watch this, responsibility from creation. Notice what, what, what Genesis 1 says. It says, then God said, let us make a man in our image after our likeness and let them be, have dominion. Y'all hear the word dominion? Over everything, the fish and all of this stuff. You have dominion over all the earth, do all those things. If you jump down to 20, 28 and say, God bless them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. You got to have some type of stewardship power to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Stewardship. Stewardship. Guess what God gives Daniel? God gives him responsibility responsibility of a nation. That's why God has elevated him to the position where God has placed him. He's given him stewardship, watch this, over this nation, and the nation and the kings don't even know that God has given him stewardship. And they don't even understand why they keep putting him in position. If you notice, if you notice in the Bible, if you read the story, he prophesies. He tells him and interprets dream. He tells King Nebuchadnezzar that in the next seven years, the drought is going, some things are going to happen. Nebuchadnezzar loses his mind for seven years. Stewardship. The last thing, check this out. Leadership. Leadership. The act of leading people in an organization, the art of influence. I say this all the time from a military definition. The art of in influencing individual people, teams, and organizations to get from point A to point B. In other words, to get from one level to the next level. From a kingdom building context, that means spiritually, physically, and financially. Leadership. Everyone in here, God has implanted in you a relationship with him through Jesus Christ that should bring out some type of leadership. I had my son up on the stage and I challenged him as the leader of the house. I'm not talking about a leader of a church. I'm not talking about a leader of a company, a leader of anything, a leader of the house. All of us, God says, look, 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 look. I'm trying to cultivate some leadership uh, qualities in you because there's some things that you have to do for the kingdom of God. Remember, word worship, warfare, and work in ministry. Your warfare is not just for you. Sometimes you got to be on point and war for other folk. Leadership. God's looking for some leaders because that's what God created us. That's what his relationship with him is all about. The last thing, check this out. I'll give you this last point, but make sure you get this. This process, 
It's more important than anything else. It's more important than a degree. It's more important than your business. It's more important than you desiring and seeking out a spouse or a companion. It's more important than your relationship with your husband or your wife. It's more important than any family relationship because in the midst of this is where God really teaches you how to be what he's called you to be. How to develop that relationship with others. Remember what that observation said. Last thing, here we go. Check this out, last thing. Because of your God relationship, because of your cultivating process, so once you get this and God cultivates you, because he's preparing you for the kingdom. He's preparing you to do work in the kingdom. He's preparing you to be an example of Christ. He's preparing you to help save souls. He's preparing you to change generations. He's preparing you to break strongholds. He's preparing you to walk in his glory. He's preparing you for your blessings and your next level. He's preparing you for prosperity so you can give him glory. He's preparing you for all the great things that he has placed in you. He's preparing you. He's preparing you for that next level. Watch this. You got to understand this, Daniel. The bigger the situation, the bigger the deliverance. Situations mean problems, wilderness, trials, tribulations, go through, etc. The bigger the situation, the bigger the deliverance. You don't have to worry about anything. You need to let God handle the opposition. Daniel prays in the window. The king signs a, a decree that he was tricked in signing. You know the story. Daniel's thrown in the lion's den. The bigger the situation, the bigger the deliverance. Remember before he was thrown in the fiery furnace. But God was also cultivating him, watch this, for the lion's den. Check this out. The bigger the situation, the bigger the deliverance. The bigger the situation means the bigger the assignment. Because the assignment is big, the situation and deliverance must be big. See, Daniel's assignment, if you notice, from chapters 1 through 7, continues to increase. His deliverance level continues to increase because the assignments get bigger and bigger. The assignment, the situation, the deliverance process will continue in your life as a servant. This is why, and I close, watch this. You must continue to grow your relationship with God through Jesus Christ so you will be prepared for your assignment. Check this out about your assignment. And I'm leaving you here. Check this out about your assignment. You never know the magnitude of your assignment before you are released on your assignment. See, that's why the cultivating process is so important. You, you never know the magnitude of your assignment until you're released on your assignment. Uh, because there is a cultivating process that you must go through to prepare you for your assignment that you don't know about. See, all of this right here is preparing you for your next assignment. It's not preparing you for your right now. See, you are able to go through this because of, of, of where you are in your faith. But when God starts to really cultivate you and continue the process, he, he is continuing it for your next assignment so you will be prepared. See, when he was thrown in the fiery furnace, that was preparing him for the lion's den. Because in the fiery furnace, he was with his friends. There was some comfort. Watch this. And then, and then the Bible says an angel shows up. But in the lion's den, he's by himself. And not only is he by himself, but watch this. You have King Darius, and then you have those other satraps. If you notice, it says that they sealed and put a stone. Uh, 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 they sealed it based on the signet of the, of the king and also the sealing of those satraps. Why? So the king, watch this. If you do your research, so the king would not release him because he didn't want to put him in there. And so that the satraps would not get in there and kill him and say that the lions killed him. So here he is, 
in the lion's den. Mm. Because the bigger the situation, bigger the deliverance. Understand this. I don't care what you're going through. Care how tough it is. Stop focusing on that. Stop focusing on that. Focus on your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you really want things to happen in your life, the stuff that God has placed in you is not by happenstance. You have to make sure that you have a solid relationship, an intentional relationship, not a drive-by relationship. Jesus gave his life. relationship with his father. He was on a mission. And no matter how big the situation, he understood that the deliverance will be even greater. Because the deliverance wasn't for him. <laughs> Somebody say the deliverance was for me. I find myself in. If I find myself all alone, <laughs> I don't worry about it because I can look in, in the book of Daniel and see that he was all alone in the lion's den. But because of his relationship with God, God closed the mouth of those hungry lions. Jesus felt all alone at the Garden of Gethsemane when he says, I wish this cup would pass from me, but not my will. Let your will be done because I realize, God, that your deliverance is bigger than the situation. And I realize, God, that my relationship with you is greater than anything that I could do. Eternal God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for life. Thank you for your strength. I speak over your people on today, God, that you continue to create an atmosphere of relationship in them with you. I speak, God, that you give them a, a burning desire to be in relationship with you. Understanding that the most important relationship is with you because it dictates and defines relationships with others. So I speak over this congregation. I speak over your people. I decree and declare it done. Satan, you have no power, you have no position, you have no place. And we bind you in the name of Jesus. Everyone in the building say, be it done unto me. It is done unto me. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. ask you to stand at this time. The question is, what is your word like?
life like? What is your worship like? life like? What is your warfare life like? What is your work in ministry life like? And if any of those areas in your life well let me say it this way if any of those areas that are just mentioned that you want to create a stronger bond and you realize God I, I got to take it to the next level I have to I must take it to the next level I want you to come down to the altar real quick real quick real quick real quick those are the tools that God uses <laughs> to give the other results. And then the other results produce all the other stuff that we desire. That's why the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Your delight are the, uh, are the covered, uh, cultivating tools and the cultivating results. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. Brother Malcolm, I want you to hear me, man. God has given to you, God has, God has blessed you. God has given to you, God has blessed you. You have a single that you release, right? And as, as, you, as you were talking about that, and as I was preaching it and going through this, you just came, you kept coming to my mind. And this, this is real talk. I know nothing about you. I just found out you had a single that you released. Because I don't ask any questions when someone comes because I want I really want to try the spirit by the spirit. I want God to speak to me. And you hear me good, bro. God's gonna do it for you. Oh no, 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 no. You ain't you ain't hear me. This is not by happenstance. God's gonna do it for you. But you you listen to me, you hear me good. This this day is ordained. That's your lovely wife. Y'all listen to me. Please, please, please. Hear God. You make sure without a shadow of a doubt that your relationship with God is the strongest relationship in your life. It's going to teach you how to love her like God wants you to love her. And it's going to open up the windows of heaven over your life. Whatever you have to do, you write down names, you write down stuff, you write down people, you write down all of this. You look at your life and you figure out, okay, these are the things that really God is shining more than you in my life. And you shift it and watch what happens. Watch, watch what happens. Watch what happens. That's all I got to say. Watch what happens. It's not that, not that your life is jacked up, man. This is the challenge that God has given you to take you to the next level. This is the cultivating challenge that God has given you. Listen to me. Whatever it is that you're asking God to do as you stand here, whatever it is that you're asking God to do, in that in that in that uh, cultivating tool category, whatever it is, I want you to place it in your heart, and I want you to make a commitment to God, make a commitment to God, an intentionality in God to Jesus Christ that you're going to do that thing. You're going to do that thing, and I promise you, you're going to see stuff start to develop in you that you've never seen before. I promise you make sure that's your priority in 2022, your word life, your worship life, your warfare life, and your work in ministry life. Make sure that you're, that's your priority in 2022, and I promise you, I can guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to see a shift that's going to blow your mind. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands up. Eternal God, we thank you right now. Lift your hands up. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, God. We thank you for those that have come to the altar in the name of Jesus, God. We decree and declare, God, that your word, as you stated, your word will not come back void in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak over their lives right now. I speak, God, that you transition their lives, God. I speak that you transform their lives, God. I speak, God, that you build a trust in their lives, knowing, God.
God, that you can do all things except fill. So, God, as they line up their word life, God, bless them. As they line up their worship life, bless them. As they line up their warfare life, bless them. As they line up their work and ministry, bless them beyond what they can imagine or think, God. Make them greater disciples. Make them better companions. Oh God, oh God, make them great stewards over spiritual stuff, physical stuff, financial stuff, God. Oh God, make them great leaders that you have called them to be. We decree and declare as they continue to delight themselves in you, God, that you will, because you said it in Deuteronomy, you will, because you're a God that cannot and will not lie, give them the desires of their heart. Oh, it's an easy process. It's an easy, simple process. But it's a sacrificial process. So God, give them a sacrificial spirit. A sacrificing spirit. We speak it, we decree it, we declare it. For it is in the mighty name of Jesus. The matchless, mighty, magnificent name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess. Every situation must bow. Every situation must confess that he is Lord. We speak it. Be it done unto me. Repeat after me. Be it done unto me. It is done unto me. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Give God some praise. Give me praise. Give me praise. Give me praise. You may go back to your we get a benediction. Give him praise. Keep praising. Keep praising. Come on. All over the building. Keep praising. Him. Keep praising. Him. All over the building. Give him a hand clap of praise. I need every voice in here to say thank you, Lord. Just continue to praise him right now. We love you, Lord. Remain standing. Everyone stand, please. recognize our visitors as we dismiss. Visitors, again, we love you. We thank you. So when I call your name, just raise your hand. Members, 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 make sure that these visitors that have come this morning are loved on and appreciated and that they don't walk back to their cars by themselves in the name of Jesus. So here we go. Monique uh, Coke, I believe. Monique Coke. We're, thank you, Monique. Thank you so much. A friend told you about us. God bless you, Sister Monique. Uh, Charles Brooks, Charles Brooks, where's Charles Brooks? Friend told you about us, thank you brother Charles Brooks, thank you so much. Veronica Spencer, where's Veronica Spencer? Hey Veronica, thank you so much Veronica. A friend all the way from Little Am, all right. Uh, Wanda Murphy, Wanda Murphy, where's Wanda? Hey Wanda, bless y'all. Friend. Uh, Lissandria Castillo. Cast Wait, did I say that right? Bless you. Bless you, bless you. Oh, Sister uh, Jatana. Thank you, Sister Jatana again. Oh, Sister Jatana is on it. Dondria, I think that's Sims. Where's Dondria? Did I get it right? Bless you, Dondria. All right. Daryl Matthews. Where's Brother Daryl Matthews? Brother Daryl. What's up with you, man? God bless you, brother. Quentin Clay. Where's Quentin Clay? Oh, that's Brother Q. What's up, man? <laughs> brother Q graduating this year. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, again, we thank you so much for spending time with us, Brother Malcolm. God bless you, my brother. And hopefully, what we're trying to do with Brother Malcolm is I really want, I really want Brother Malcolm to help us with our student ministry and praise and worship in the back. So we're building that piece. And then hopefully we can we can talk and he can be, be a regular up here helping us out in the name of Jesus. Great young man, man. You got great things coming. Um, I want, I want, listen to me, y'all. We believe in, we believe in support and we believe in blessing. Uh, uh, that young brother's fertile ground. So please, please, please uh, go to his, what do you say, your YouTube, your Instagram, all that good stuff?
All right, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to shoot that all out to us in the email because we want to support him in the name of Jesus. We want to be a blessing. Amen. So, so, so make sure you do that. When we shoot it out, make sure you do that and be a blessing to this young man and those beautiful young ladies that he has with him. Amen. Now, are y'all are y'all sisters? Are y'all twins? Y'all twins? That's your family too? Or no, that's your sister. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, I got you. Twins. Hey, y'all so fly, up there, twins. I like I'm seeing double, but they don't have the same thing on. All right, God bless y'all. Y'all good? Who y'all picking for the Super Bowl? All right. I hate to blow y'all mind. I hate to blow y'all mind. I hate to blow y'all mind. All right. Y'all, I'm a, I, hey, look. I'll be calling all y'all and texting all y'all after the game, okay? All y'all Ram people. I will. I'm going to get you. I'll I get you later. I ain't going to mess with you right now. I'll get you a little later. Name of Jesus, all right? Bless y'all. All right, let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Don't forget, check this out. Don't forget, we have a, a shoe drive, a tennis shoe drive for adults and kids. Uh, that the hype uh, ministry is is undergoing right now that they're putting on that they're doing shoe drop and also uh, don't forget parents listen to me parents on the second and fourth Wednesday there is hype Bible study hype Bible study every second and fourth Wednesday we just started it last Wednesday it won't be this Wednesday we got leadership meeting for the next Wednesday so we'll continue to talk about that you will see more information on it we need our students involved parents in the name of Jesus I'm middle schoolers in the high school Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Eternal God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. Thank you for what our ears have heard. Thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. God, we bless your name. We thank you for being a keeper of your promise. And God, as we depart this place, never from your mercy, never from your grace, God, we ask that you continue, God, to govern our thoughts, continue to order our steps, continue to direct our paths in you through Jesus Christ. Do your word, God. Do your Holy Spirit making us more effective kingdom builders. And I speak as your under-shepherd over your people. I speak greatness as they continue to cultivate and you continue to cultivate that relationship that they have with you through Jesus Christ. So we thank you. We speak over this church. We speak that this is a debt-free church. And God, in order for it to be a debt-free church, there has to be debt-free members. So we speak over membership, debt-free that they're able to be a bigger blessing to the kingdom, to the least lost and left out. We thank you, we praise you. Now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest ruling and abide in each and every one of our hearts and forth now and forevermore. Before I say be it done unto me, I want y'all to please send up a special prayer for uh, Brother Amory and his family. Pray over his mother. He's traveling back and forth to Alabama to make sure that his mother's taken care of and be with her. So y'all pray for that family, please, in the name of Jesus. Be after me. Be it done unto me. It is done unto me in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Go in peace.